I'm joined now by our Professor Michael Halleck from Cologne, and you've just presented an industry symposium on options for patients who are relapsed and refractory, which was of great interest to me because that was a situation I found myself in a couple of years ago and luckily managed to find a clinical trial. Yes, I think it was a surprisingly well attended session, I have mm. to say, because uh, we are almost at the end of the meeting and we were expecting that uh, people would enjoy the city of New York a little bit, at least at this late um, time of the meeting. But it was, the audience was pretty full and we, I think, could see novel agents in combination. We could evaluate a couple of concepts uh, of MRD, minimal residual disease guided therapies that are, I think, will come and become more and more important. And in particular, I could discuss uh, my favorite subject as of today, uh, that is to combine the best principles of actions, uh, the best principle, um, principles of treatment, the best agents into one treatment concept to really achieve long lasting remissions and eventually curative treatments. We shouldn't, should be very careful with this because we shouldn't promise anything before we know that this is achievable, but we have already undergone important steps because we see that by combining venetoclax with obinutuzumab or to combine antibodies with targeted agents, our MRD rates are increasing and uh, achieve the best results that we have ever seen in CLL. For me, what was really came across in that session was you probably had, you know, seven, eight hundred scientists, doctors in the room. Yep. And the lack of consensus about what the best treatment option was and what the aim of treatment was. I mean, the fact was that when we asked, when you, you were asked to choose, you know, a number, uh, whether MRD was actually something that you were testing for. This wasn't seen as, as a name for everyone in the room, which I found interesting. Although the numbers of MRD that believe in MRD testing have increased over the past years, I think the biggest dissent or the lack of consensus was what second line therapy to choose when it comes to patients with a deletion 17P or dysfunction of the P53 gene. I think there we have no clear consensus and I should even uh, mention in a broader sense in second line therapy with patients at relapse there is no consensus because we have not a lot of randomized trials. Now we have at least four very active agents and to really know which combination when to choose is an unknown area so this is why research is needed. But but let's hope that we minimize the number of patients that relapse. That's the first goal now, to really have highly active first-line therapies that avoid the problem of relapses. That's, uh, that would be a prime goal, and I hope that with the novel agents in combination, this is an achievable goal. So there's both things, and you're totally right, well observed, there's a total lack of consensus. Why? Because we have not enough data, not enough evidence. Now we have all the beauty full agents and principles, but we don't know when to use what in which patients. And of course, you also then have the issue of access. Even amongst the yes. panel, you are having to say, well, we actually don't have access to some of these agents in that setting. It must be incredibly frustrating. Well, very correct. I think uh, while we can be very lucky and happy that uh, this is happening in our lifetimes, and uh, when I was starting to do research in CLL, um, I was not even dreaming of this, of the current situation, because we had one agent uh, or two uh, and then nothing else. So relapse treatment was a frustrating experience. Now we have highly active agents, um, so this is beautiful. Uh, but uh, when we really, and I think this will come and become a very big problem over the next few years. So let's say we have combinations uh, that act extremely well and will allow to get patients into remission or complete remission um, in the majority of the patients. Then the next big question will be access to these principles of therapies that are still fairly expensive and um, that are available only in a few countries eventually or for a few patients. So I, my personal experience on this is, for example, I give lectures in South America and uh, tell all the beauties of the new world of CLL treatment. And then I have case discussions with principles of treatment that we no longer use in Europe or in the United States. And I can then I feel humbled and ashamed 
And I think we should speak up and say this is not tolerable. Every patient of this globe um, needs to have access to the most recent medical knowledge. And this is something we now have to develop a, a consensus for and uh, physicians and patients should strive to improve the situation. Disparity is not only a problem of developing countries, it's also a problem of uh, Western countries, including the United States or Europe, where in the southern part of Europe, just to mention the last example, um, there is not the same access to novel drugs as we do have it in the northern part of Europe. So all this needs to be taken into account once we have achieved, uh, let's say, definitive or long-lasting remissions with combinations of good agents. And of course, you've got people even in Canada, you know, a few miles away from the American border, having difficulty accessing accessing treatment and traveling. And of course, my my case, I've had to travel from Australia, where we don't even have ibrutinib access at the moment, to London. Um, you know, thank goodness I've got dual nationality. But what do you think the answer is? Finally, I mean, what what? can be done because otherwise it is going to cause social unrest and medical inequality. In a certain way, but it's a very broad picture mm. now, uh, but um, I, I think you can go from medicine to politics. In a certain way, what we need to develop is a global ethics, how to deal with problems of this social magnitude. Because no society will tolerate on the long run that their children or mothers cannot be treated for a disease, where, um, whereas in other countries uh, the cure rate is uh, close to 100% or the control rate is close to 100%. This will be an intolerable situation and I think even for the sake of our own um, survival of our of human race, if you wish, we need to develop um, a conscience and also recipes how to deal with this and um, to overcome nationalism and, uh, and um, other parts that can actually Im be impediment to, to an impediment to the solution of the problem. So an approach with conscience of all physicians, I think physicians in particular tend to neglect these inequalities, maybe because it's too difficult um, to, to tolerate this, and we need to be open-eyed and, uh, and address this problem publicly and to ask our politicians to do something to improve the situation. And Professor Halleck, thank you so much for everything you're doing. Um, this afternoon is about what comes next when these novel agents, you know, build resistance, whatever. So uh, looking forward to hearing that, but thank you. My pleasure.